Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 294. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 285 to 294. Hey, 294, we have a data set here with account managers and then sales reps and sales. We want to build a pie chart that has a filter. So we can select Sam and it will only show the sales reps for Sam. Sam uh, Viet works under Sam, Lung works under Sam, Gardenia works under Sam. Under Sue is Joe and Han. So we want to filter on a pie chart. Now this filter idea could work on any chart like this. Now the easy way to do this, if you have your data set up with field names like this and uh, records and rows, a little database, and no other data touching it anywhere, you can see I have that column of blanks there, then a pivot table is the fastest way to have a filter on your chart. I'll show you a um, pivot table, and then I'll also show you a formula method. All right, here it is. Click in one cell in your data uh, table, insert pivot table, pivot table. Now I'm going to dump this right here in this sheet existing worksheet, maybe right um, here, and then click OK. Now I have mine set up, shows you the, the classic pivot table view here, so I can show you both 2003 and 7 method. Now here's the field list, and we want our sales rep in our row area. Now in 2003, uh, and you'd click and drag, and when you saw that blue slash there showing in the row area, you'd, you'd drop, or the gray box and then you drop and you'd have it. Now that's everyone. Here's the cool thing about pivot tables. This is called the page field or report filter in this version. You either click and drag over here or you click and drag down here. One nice thing is it is a little bit easier. Some people had a hard time with clicking and dragging over here. Once you got used to it, it was fine though. And now finally we'll do sales down here or in that, that area. I'm going to close this because now we're pretty much done. That is just amazing. When you see how hard, much more difficult it is to do with formulas, you'll be amazed. Here it is, report filter or page filter. I'm just going to select Alex. And by the way, in this new version, you can select multiple items, which you weren't able to do in earlier versions. I'm going to click OK. Just like that, it shows just the sales reps for Alex. Go to Sam, just for Sam. Now, how do we make a uh, pivot or a pie chart? Actually, in this version, it's amazing. You can actually go up into your pivot table options, or you can go straight up into insert pie chart. And I'm going to click on this pie right here. I'm going to close this uh, pivot chart filter. And I'm going to point to the edge, hold shift, and click and drag in. I'm going to make it real small so we can see how awesome this is and how it changes so automatically. If I come here to the filter and select Alex, I can immediately see that the, the names change here, the data changes here. Looks like we need to make it a little bit bigger. So it has all of them right there. We'll try this again. We'll select the drop down and select Sue. Sure enough, it has it. Now, it'd be nice if, to have a title that says uh, Account Manager Sue. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do it in a cell, and then we'll link our chart title to that cell. So right here, I'm going to say equals, click on the word Account Manager, and use our join symbol, ampersand, shift 7, double quote, space, double quote, ampersand. So we've joined whatever's there, plus a space, and then whatever's there. So, Account Manager Sue. We could even uh, put a colon. Now, let's click on our title here. And notice there's nothing flashing up in the formula bar, but when you hit F2, your cursor jumps up there and flashes. Type an equal sign and then click on the cell. When you hit Enter, your title is linked to the cell. That's much too big, so let's go up to the home ribbon, and I'm going to change it to 8. All right, so now let's see if this works. I'm going to select Alex, and sure enough, it changes. Now, you could add uh, labels here, uh, right-click, format, data series. Actually, that won't work. We have um, to go up to layout, data labels, and then all the way down to more. And we want to show the category name. So we see our names there, and we could show the value or the percentage or whatever you would, would like. 
click Close. Make it, a, it, it works when it's a little bit bigger like that. But now we can see when we change this uh, drop down to Sue, sure enough, it all updates the percentages, the names. Oh, we don't need this over here now that we have them there. Let's, what's the keyboard shortcut for delete? Delete. So there we have it, a nice little uh, filtered pie chart. That's with the pivot table, pivot chart. Now let's see how to do it with formulas. Some people don't like to do pivot tables for whatever reasons. Maybe they don't like to refresh the data when it changes or whatever. But here's a way you could do it with formulas. Now, we got to have our account managers and then set up next to them somehow the sales rep that they uh, the sales rep that work under that account manager. Now we need a filter, a drop down here, so let's do data validation. And in 2007 and 2003, the keyboard shortcut is Alt DL. I'm going to say um, select a list, and the source is going to be right here. All right, so now we have our drop down, which will be our filter. The only trick is how to get the names, a whole row of names whenever you select a name here. Well, we'll use the VLOOKUP because it's set up as a VLOOKUP. We would have to do something different if it was set up a different way. Uh, first column has our names, and we want to return Fred, which means column 2, Gigi, column 3, Jerome, column 4, because this is column 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, so let's use VLOOKUP equals VL. And in 2007, as soon as you type the minimum number of letters and you see the function name in highlighted, just hit tab. And after a while, you know, I know VLOOKUP by heart, so I just type equals VL tab. Pretty fast, pretty amazing. Now the lookup value is going to be SAM, F4 twice to lock it going down, comma, the lookup table array is that whole um, table right there without the field names. And I'm going to lock it going down F4 twice, comma. And now here's the trick. We need a column number. So when we're right here, we need column 2. But when we copy the formula down here, we need column 3, column 4, column 5. Well, we've seen how to do this in lots of other videos, the rows function, the rows function. And we'll say F dollar sign 15 since we want that one locked going down, colon F15. This tells us right now row rows, I'm sorry, not rows, rows. This is it is rows, multiple rows from 15 to, to 15. There's just one. But when you copy this down, that's locked. That is not. This will move to 16. So then when it gets down to the next row, it'll say 2. But we want 3 when we get to the next row. So we'll simply add 1. All right, so that's a pretty trick way to get our column index. Finally, the final argument, we have to put 0 for false. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Now I'm going to uh, drag this down. And sure enough, Sam. It got Chin Dana Gardenia. Let's go ahead and select uh, Sue. And sure enough, it got the right uh, um, sales reps from there. So that's a good trick for, for other uses also, to be able to uh, retrieve things from a VLOOKUP table, but display them horizontally like that. Now let's do a formula. In um, we, we need to sum multi-conditionally, conditionally, and we have two conditions. We need the account manager, Sue. And the trues and falses will come from this column. And then for this cell, we need Han. So we have to ask, where is Han in this column? And then once we get a true here for uh, Sue, true there, and a true here, it'll take the corresponding value from there. Now there's a few different ways we could do this. Let's use the sum product. And I'm going to do this in parentheses. And the first column we'll check is uh, the count manager. Highlight the first one, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then F4 to lock it. And that has to be equal to Sue, or whatever's in that cell. F4 to lock it going down, close parentheses, times, and then open parentheses. This column, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. We have to find out where in that column is it equal to what's ever in that cell right there, one to my left, close parentheses, times. And now we finally need our sales. Control Shift Down Arrow F4, close parentheses. Now, it'll give us true falses here and true falses here. Because we're multiplying, mul true times true equals 1. And then when we get a true, true, and a corresponding sales number here, it'll come out as a number, and then it will be added. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. 
Now, some people if, uh, like to use not multiplying with the sum product, but double negative. So we'll put a double negative in front of the trues and falses, and a comma here, and a double negative in front of these trues and falses, and a comma there. We don't need a double negative there, because those don't need, need to be converted from trues and falses to numbers. They're already numbers. Now, where do you use this? Double negative is better when you have huge sets of data. It actually calculates faster. I have a another video on some product that shows you some advantages and disadvantages for both. All right, and in 2007, you don't need to use this uh, method anymore. There's a much more efficient function called sum ifs. It calculates sometimes 100, 200, 300 percent faster than uh, a formula like that. Here we go, sum ifs. And the sum range, it wants that first. And then it will take criteria, range, and criteria. Here it is. I'll click on the sale, Control Shift down there on F4. That's the sum range, comma, criteria range. I'm going to pick the account manager first. And notice it's criteria range. When I type a comma, it says criteria range 1. Now it goes to criteria 1. And that's going to be this. So I'm going to lock it going down. All going down, comma, and then criteria 2, that is the sales rep column. Control shift down arrow, F4, comma, and then criteria range 2, comma, now criteria 2, that one right there, not locked. Control, um, close parentheses, and then control enter. Double click and send it down. All right, so now um, we have our data, and let's see if it works. I select Sam and then Sue. It looks like it's working fine. Now we just need to highlight uh, two of the columns and go do our pie chart. We can uh, decrease the size here. Now I did a little formatting exactly like the last one, but now we can see when we change uh, our drop down here, the chart is filtered very nicely. All right, we'll see you next trick.